Hello, my name is Tandra Gambarani. This is Cameron Knight, and this is Mehran Abdulmajid. And we are Air Traffic Awareness, Solutions for Smart Air Safety. We are three computer science graduate students from UKC. We have combined more than 15 years of professional software development and engineering experience, including a full stack developer, a pilot, and some aerospace engineering background. Our application has already been in development for months, and our hardware product is in the Alpha, stage pro alpha stages, which you can see over here, and you can see a demo later after, after this presentation. In the year 2018, there were more than 500 deaths due to aircraft accidents. And this is because commercial safety standards versus private safety standards are very different things, including stricter standards imposed by the FAA, more expensive avionics equipment, and pilots just generally have better training. In fact, it's been proven that private flight is nearly as deadly as driving a car. And when you consider that there's 200,000 private aircraft in the United States versus 39,000 commercial aircraft in the world, this is a pretty huge discrepancy. In fact, the FAA has been putting in laws to try and combat this number and bring it down, including the ADSB signal mandate, which is what our technology is built around. And we're going to come back to that later, but it's very important for us. So what is our product? What is air traffic coordinates? Well, we have a short video to kind of show you what we do. Air traffic awareness is a portable solution to help avoid aircraft collisions. Utilizing the ADSB technology present in all airplanes, air traffic awareness provides a pilot-friendly, streamlined user interface suitable for in-flight use. To begin, simply select your airplane from the list in the details panel. While flying, the details panel will show you information about your airplane, such as current velocity, heading, and altitude. The main interface is similar to a standard traffic collision avoidance system, or TCAS. Nearby airplanes are color-coded, so you can quickly assess their threat. An airplane flying outside the flight zone will remain white. Airplanes in the blue, or watch zone, are at a safe distance, but be sure to maintain visual separation. An airplane in the yellow, or warning zone, should be considered a potential threat. Be aware of their position and be prepared to take corrective measures. If an airplane is within the minimum safe distance, it poses an immediate threat. The airplane will turn red and an alarm will sound. Follow the proper procedures to avoid collision. Tapping on an airplane will show its information in the details panel, along with its current distance. Tap the close button to return to your aircraft. Nearby airplanes can also be selected by tapping on the List Airplanes button. Air traffic awareness runs on a self-contained portable device with integrated ADS-B in, touch display, and high gain antenna, as well as iPad and Android tablets with a compatible ADS-B in receiver. So we keep talking about ADS-B, so what is ADS-B? It's basically going to be replacing the secondary radar system in airplanes. Right now, the only way airplanes can share information is either by going through an air traffic control tower first or sending a signal to a satellite. So if you can't get hold of an air traffic control tower and you do not have a TCAS system installed in your aircraft, there's no way of knowing what planes are in your vicinity besides just looking outside of your window, which in the 21st century is, is pretty archaic. In fact, it's something like eight seconds is needed before a collision happens once you see an aircraft out of your window. So the ADSB mandate is kind of one of the things which the FAA is trying to impose to help us and to combat these issues. So how ADSB works is you basically put this ADSB out transmitter on every single aircraft, and it will transmit all relevant uh, information about it at all times. So every single plane in the sky will be transmitting all this information at all time, kind of like a peer-to-peer -peer internet system, so to speak. And this ADSB out transmitter is required by the FAA on every single aircraft by January 1st, 2020, and in EU by on every single aircraft by June 6th, 2020. So if you have this ADSB in receiver, pay attention to this symbol over there, because every time you see it in our presentation, it refers to this ADSB in receiver. You can access this internet connection, so to speak. So it's going to open up a market for real-time applications compatible with every single aircraft in the US and the EU. And we're really excited to be part of that space. So we kind of broken our customer segments down into these four categories. Pilots for OCD users, pilot schools, fleet managers, and insurance agencies. Um, we have been in contact with many pilots, Merm himself is a pilot. The most notable organization we've been talking to is AOPA, the largest organization for pilots in the United States. Um, we have a close relationship with Lawrence um, Airport where they have their flight school and we've been in contact with the flight instructors as well as we've done all of our flight testing there as well. 
Um, we've been in contact with some fleet managers, the most notable being the fleet manager here at Columbia Airport. And we want to partner with insurance agencies in the future as well. The market cap for this, for this industry, which is aircraft auxiliary equipment, includes the ASP in receiver, ASP out transmitter, as well as the applications, was $1.2 billion in the year 2018. So we want to release two versions of our product. The first one is a subscription-based mobile application compatible with all iPads as well as Android tablets. And this is for pilots who already have an ADSB in receiver. It's going to be $99 per year. It's competitively priced with other aircraft management applications. And as more features are added, new pricing options will become available. If you as a pilot do not have this ADSB in receiver already, you can go with our all-in-one device, which you can see over here. It's competitively priced against other ADSB in receivers, and free in-app updates will be available at the price of $4.99 per unit. So what makes this different from the competition? First of all, we are the first application to be built from the ground up taking ADSB signals in line. Our competitors on the left, as you can see, they have, may have ADSB features, but they still need GPS or internet connections to work to their full capacity. As well as ours is the first application to be used in flight. These applications on the left are aircraft <coughs> management system applications, which are better for pre- or post-flight checks. And they're pretty difficult to use with a lot of different complicated to use in flight, and they're just not very useful. While our, our application will quickly and efficiently give the right information to the pilot in flight. If you look at the top, you see all the hardware, ADSB in hardware products compared to ours. And you can see we are pretty competitively priced with the rest of them. And we also come pre-installed with, um, with our software. As well, we are compatible with all open source ADSB in, trans ADSB in transmitters. So this is kind of our financial project projections for the next five years. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is the gross profit in year five, which is $2.1 million. This is less than 1% of the $1.2 billion market cap. So I, we think it's very doable, even conservative in some ways, to try and aim to get to that point in year five. Uh, we've kind of broken our revenue stream up into the application and the product. Uh, I want you to look at the net income as well. Throughout the five years, we will be profitable, which is very, which is very good for us from year one. Um, our general and admin expenses, year one is going to be startup costs, and year two through five will be uh, recurring costs. Our startup costs are broken down over here. The main ones are going to be legal expenses for us. Uh, it's quite expensive to pay technology in this industry, uh, as well as marketing. And we still have some app and product development to go, and paying for starting inventory, as well as some other things. And then our recurring costs are found on this page over here. It kind of lists it up. R&D is a big one for us. And then we'll be outsourcing a customer service outsourcing of legal and accounting, rent for inventory space, compensation and payroll tax, marketing and advertising, commissioning and credit card fees, and as you can see the total on the bottom. Us at Eric, we are very dedicated to improving safety for pilots, um, and we really are excited about our product and joining this ADSB space. We really need your help to get to the next level, and we hope that you understand we want to build a culture for safety, and we want to bring the best product to, Eric, to the pilots right now. Thank you very much. Are there approvals required for FAA to make sure it's in compliance for the 2020 requirement? Uh, for the ADSB? Uh -huh, for, for your equipment? And if so, what's the process in getting it approved? So the reason we went with the portable uh, is because we don't have to be uh, approved, in any sense. Uh, you are, there are, they've already approved tablets, so we're just sneaking in under that radar, basically. And if it's installed inside the aircraft, yeah. then it needs certification from FAA. Okay. But since it's portable, then you have iPad or this thing or phone or anything. So it doesn't need any other approvals other than no, this no, nothing. box that it's in? Yeah. Yeah, if somebody's already had it, got an established name like Garmin, uh, why would why would anybody buy from you? I mean, what's to keep Garmin from doing what you're doing? Garmin already went ahead, and then they built a unit that cost fifteen thousand dollars. So if you have an aircraft, fifteen thousand dollars. So they they don't want to do this because this like cost seven hundred dollars. So they lose that market. So for me, when I have my iPad in the aircraft flying. I don't even look at that unit, although I have it, but I look at my iPad. So this is not their market, they're already ahead of that. So they don't, get, they don't like, you know, business-wise, not a good idea for them to do this. Uh, 
uh, with the ongoing costs, uh, it looked like there was research and development, but I didn't see a line for ongoing upgrades to technology, cybersecurity, and, and things like that. That was to be included in the research and development. R &D. I did, I did, yes, R&D included also upgrades and um, uh, updates in the future. Okay, was that, what was that number? If I'm remembering right, it was like $15,000. Yes. And that, you think that's reasonable for the cybersecurity aspects of this? I mean, we don't really, uh, this isn't connected to the internet, so it doesn't really have the, that as a attack vector. Um, you know, if we, we do go to add a, a, a connected component to it, we might have some good figures, but for now I think we're comfortable with that. Okay. What was your methodology for trying to get to the mar your market opportunity? So we have our business mentor, Jean Hong, and we've kind of been in collaboration with her, as well as Marilyn. This has kind of been an issue in the, in the aircraft, in the, sorry, in the industry for quite a while, with ADC coming up, and we've been talking to quite a few people in the industry about it. Um, we started off with just talking to pilots, and then it kind of escalated from there, talking to you know, organizations, and talking to people in flight schools, fleet managers, just kind of getting a feel of what everybody thinks about this type of technology, and we've been very successful in our feedback, which is why we continue going on with what we're doing. And the three of you are going to do that? Yes. 